Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And Mernie is back for 2023 Halloween and it's going to be your opportunity to get a brand new tier 8 premium medium tank completely for free. And I'd say it's actually a lot more achievable for the majority of players than, for example, from a mission marathon. The vehicle in question is the Obsidian. And you should expect a full tank review on this channel in the next couple of days to let you know of whether it's actually worth it. In today's video, I'm gonna know exactly what you'll need to do to be able to get your hands on this vehicle as well as all of the other rewards that are available in Murney and give you my tips and tricks as to not only how to beat the normal difficulty, but the nightmare difficulty, which you will have to if you want to save yourself a lot of time in getting the tank. So firstly, to be able to get yourself the Obsidian, you're going to have to unlock 16 different stages of what Wargaming are calling reels. So you have to decrypt these different reels by using keys, and you can either purchase these keys from Wargaming for a fairly substantial amount of money, or alternatively, unlock them inside the game mode by playing it. Now, interestingly enough, there are actually no daily missions that you can complete for money to be able to get extra keys unless i'm missing something completely the only benefit that you get for playing daily is that for each of the six vehicles that you have available you can get a bonus key for taking a hundred miriam to the magnus so this encourages players not to just pick one vehicle that might be the best but to be able to rotate through all of them for daily rewards. On the other hand, for this mission marathon, unlike most of the mission marathons, this actually means that you could kind of grind it all in, in a couple of days, rather than arbitrarily having to wait to be able to play a little bit every single day to be able to complete this mission marathon. To be able to get the tank, you're going to have to unlock 15 different reels. And the 15 reels require larger amounts of keys to be able to unlock for a total of 310 keys to be able to get the tank. Now, let me clarify, for the final couple of reels, they have requirements. You have to defeat the final boss on Nightmare and spend 30 keys for the final reel. Whereas if you can't defeat the boss on Nightmare, it's going to cost you 100 extra keys, which is a lot of playing. Accordingly, you're best to not play the random game mode, but try and find some friends who want to join you on your quest to be able to beat the final boss on Nightmare. And to facilitate the process, I'm making a couple of Discord rooms, which you can join and try and find friends on the EU, NA or Asia server to try and complete the game mode on Nightmare to be able to unlock that bonus achievement and reduce the amount of keys that you need massively to complete the event. So if you want to find some friends to make this whole event easier, then I'll put a link to the Discord down below in the description. So what kind of stuff can you get for completing Murney? Well, you can actually get yourself battle pass points for the first time as a reward for unlocking the different stages. There's 400 of them up for grabs. That's enough to complete eight stages of the battle pass if you're trying to make your way through it. There's also 450 bonds that you can be able to get your hands on. Excitingly enough, there are two personal training manuals up for grabs, which are great for boosting up a single crew member. There's also some premium account time to be able to grab along the way. But interestingly, for the European server, there are actually four 100% extra credit boosters up for grabs for the first time. So I would thoroughly recommend saving those for frontline and activating them and you're going to be making at least a million credits per hour, if not more, if you're a good player with those boosts. So if you want to decrypt all of the 15 reels, you're going to need 310 points. Now, you get, if you're a really good player, about 10 points per game, but the average player, even if you're doing your daily doubles, might get about 5 points per game. So you have 14 days, including today on the European server, 13 on the NA server as it started yesterday, if you're watching this video as it's released, to be able to get yourself 310 points, which means that you're going to have to get 22 points per day. So for the average player, that's going to take four games. For the incredible player, you know, it might only take two games if you finish top on your team. Accordingly, that means that the average player is going to have to play about 56 games of money to be able to complete it, which is going to be about 18 hours of gameplay if each round of money is taking you 20 minutes. Now, considering that that is by far the lowest requirement ever, I'd say, for a full-blooded tier eight premium tank, that makes this event a real good opportunity for free-to-play players to be able to get their hands on a premium vehicle. Furthermore, considering that you don't even have to play every single day as you go along, and you could, if you really wanted to, do all of that on one of the two weekends that this event is running, that means that more players than ever before actually have a real opportunity to get a tier eight premium tank without spending any money. So now that you know all about the rewards and how long it's probably 
probably going to take you to be able to complete money if you want to participate in it then i'm going to give you my top tips for dominating on the battlefield so firstly you should just pick whatever tank matches your playstyle. wargaming put an infographic up on their homepage, which shows the strengths and the weaknesses of all of the different vehicles the hornet really high firepower awful durability the grenadier also a glass cannon that has to have good knowledge of enemy weak points to be able to make work i would really only recommend those two for uh should we say advanced players and i think if everyone tries to pick them then your team is not going to have enough durability to get through the harder game modes i think the majority of players will be happier with the cerberus and the malachite which have a good amount of defensive hit points as well as also having great firepower as well but don't have the mobility to be able to get around quickly and for the unconfident players you're probably going to do better in the legio ferrata and also the double which have a huge amount of hit points so if you do get caught it's not the end of the world but you're going to significantly lack mobility in being able to get to places one of the most important things that you can do for your vehicle is to take consumables now unfortunately these consumables do cost you credit however you can make up to 100,000 credits per game by, by playing through money. So don't be cheap, take the ones that matter. And you'll be giving your team more chance of being able to get through the game, making more credits and making more points to be able to get your obsidian. My personal favorites would be just taking emergency repairs, either magazine loading or cyclic loading, depending on if whether you're playing an auto loader or not, and then having group repairs. Group repairs is amazing. It does an AoE heal around you. So if you see that one of your allies is getting low on health, you can be a great team player. It also helps that it's by far the cheapest at only 3,000 credits. So I feel like everybody should take group repairs. Well, you should play Murney for fun. I also don't feel that the issue in Murney is the amount of firepower that you have in being able to get through your opponents. I think having the, the abilities that heal you is completely paramount. So I would thoroughly recommend that you take emergency repairs because if you get knocked out, it's very, very hard for your team to snowball uh, back into the game. I would also like to give a shout out to the energy shield ability that you could even use instead of the increased firepower. This will definitely keep you alive and especially when you're getting swarmed by hedgehogs if you time the energy shield you can destroy them without even having to shoot them but anyway that's quite enough theory crafting let's jump into nightmare difficulty which i did yesterday on the na server so today i'm going to be playing with bobby bobito i'm going to be playing with chart fox the lunar gamer and jack and just to let you know how good these players are firstly they're amazing they're excellent players um, but if you're more interested in their win ratios, they're roughly about between 52 and 56% win rate. So you get an idea of uh, how how good the team is and the composition is for managing to get through money. Now, we were on uh, Discord together. Actually, we weren't really on Discord together. I was. We were communicating through my stream. I think they were listening to me on my stream. That must have been a horrible experience for them. But again... As I said, what you should do is click the description down below if you want to and go and find other outstanding members of the Quacky Baby community to play Murney with to increase your chances of getting through all of the difficulties and possibly even taking on Nightmare difficulty, which is what we're playing now. Now on Nightmare difficulty, all of the settings are just turned up. The, the enemies are harder, uh, they, they will hit you harder, they'll have more hit points, and also the immortal is chasing you right from the beginning. So you see that big thing that was following us that had those laser beams? That is going to harass you. Now let me clarify, you can use this scanner here when you're driving towards it, that it will, the scanner will go red, which will tell you where the immortal is. So you don't actually need to see it to know where it is, so you can adjust your line, uh, your line of attack. What I would thoroughly recommend is that you have one person in the group who's going to coordinate where the group goes. They can click the minimap to highlight one of the uh, the anomalies to be able to tell your team where to go. This is very important because if you don't and everyone goes to different areas, then on the harder difficulties especially, all of the packs are going to overwhelm you. Now what you have to do is destroy the mobs, and after you destroy the mobs, they drop Miriam. And then what you'll have to do then is take Miriam to the Magnus, and you have to collect an increasing amount of Miriam to be able to get through each of the phases. There are three phases against bots, and then afterwards you have to fight the boss. And there are three different bosses that are available. I think the first one you play against the Immortal, the second one you play against an, like an M103 version of the Immortal, and then on Nightmare difficulty you play against something else, which we're going to show you. Now this is actually incredibly scary, this part, because 
the the ones that have kind of like the radiation uh, icons, like that guard T32 there, they put AOE nukes around you, and you have to get out the circle, otherwise you take massive amounts of damage. So it's a bit like uh, like a World of Warcraft, for example, within that regard. So keep moving. Don't sit still. It'll be a little bit stressful. But after you get rid of the radiation ones, that's fine. But you know what? You can always move out the circle. So I wouldn't say that the guards that have the radiation are probably your biggest nightmares. I'd say the biggest nightmares are the links that can actually set you on fire. So you should probably try and get rid of those as quickly as possible. Other ones actually have increased rate of fire, so you've got to watch out for that. Now, you might notice that you can see that your team's Miriam counter is here, and the amount that you have to deliver to the Magnus is here. And you might be saying, oh, you've got enough Miriam, quickly go to the Magnus. No, that's actually a terrible idea, because you can carry over surplus Mi Miriam into the next stage. So the first phase, the second phase, they're pretty okay, even on Nightmare difficulty. So I would thoroughly recommend you actually spend as long as you possibly can in each of the phases to get yourself extra Miriam to make the final phase easier. So take as much time as you need. You need roughly about one minute per camp. And as long as you have a minute left for the final uh, for the final stage, for the Magnus, that should be enough. And now you'll see that we've actually got 430 Miriam between our team. And because we've got 430 Miriam between our team, after we go and clear the camp, we're probably going to have 200 extra for the next phase, which is going to be great. Next thing you want to do is you want to consider cycling your AoE heals. And you'll notice that our team's hit points are actually pretty low right now. You want to have the higher health tanks go in. But remember, if you die, you're out until your team deliver all of the Miriam to the next objective. And then you won't, and then you're going to spawn on 50% health as well. So dying is awful. You don't want to die. I'm not sure if it's the case as well, but if you die, you might even lose the, the anomalies that you get that have massive boosts. So you'll see Jack actually fell there, but we should be able to go over and collect Jack's Miriam, or he actually delivered it all, so it's not too much of a big deal. And then you'll also notice now that when we go into the next phase, everyone's going to get healed, and everyone's abilities are going to come back. So feel free to use your abilities on the last phase. Now Jack is actually going to come back alive, uh, but he's only going to come back on 50%. So I'm not sure if he's going to do a personal heal. He is going to do a personal heal. And having the personal heal is amazing because the personal heal not only heals you for about 50%, but it also continuously tops up your hit points until you either take damage or until you're maxed out. So one thing I'd like to mention as well, rabbits are beautiful. Like if you can find the rabbits, you're going to get all of the Miriam. But did you see on the minimap how some mobs spawned around here? When you do the more uh, tricky difficulties... There are more and more mobs. I think that one went right through him. Uh, that one didn't, though. Uh, so be careful, because when multiple packs spawn, you've got to keep your your eyes about you. Because the worst thing that can happen is if you go and spawn multiple uh, packs. And there you go, that's the Alpha Hedgehog. But the Alpha Hedgehog also spawns little hedgehogs as well. So you've got to keep tabs on that. And I don't really want to get caught here. Uh, they do look pretty cool, I have to admit. Wargaming's done a fantastic job with all, all in all with the game mode. Uh, I should praise them more, but I've, I've also got to focus here. But you see the radar now? It's actually telling me that the Immortal is directly behind us. So you've got to be really careful. The worst thing that you could ever do inside this game mode is to spawn multiple packs at the same time. Especially when you're going in against Corrupted here. Because the Corrupted are actually really deadly and they can overwhelm your team very quickly indeed. So you're seeing... Uh, that my tactics inside this game mode are to basically kite the immortal, go around the camps. I'm already always marking out the map for what area we go to next. And I'd recommend that that you have, as I said, that you have somebody who's calling the shots. Either you're on Discord or you just say, okay, we don't need to be on voice communication. It's not that much of a big deal. But have one person and he's the only person who can click the map. Uh, trust them. He, she, they, whoever they may be, trust that person that they are going to direct your team. Call like a, a group leader, say who feels comfortable doing it, and if no one's saying they want to be the leader, take it upon yourself to do it. All you have to do is click the map and then try to guide your team into good positions. And you'll notice now that we're in phase two of Nightmare that the enemies are actually really tricky. There's even an Alpha FV405 over there. That Alpha FV405, I think it hits for 650 damage. That is a tremendous amount. It's going to half health my vehicle. And I thought, well, maybe I can ram it a little bit to get a little bit of extra bonus in here. But I'm not sure that's probably the most sensible way to spend my hit points. Okay, so... You want to try and like think about the path that you're going around. You've also got to be like a little bit careful because right now I'm kind of 
leading my team back towards the Immortal. Um, I think that in retrospect, it would have been more sensible if I'd called the team to go for this this one over here. You see me marking in the minimap like the D0 area. So I think I made a bit of a bad call for my team here. And I think it's going to possibly put a lot of pressure on us as well. Especially with a second group that just spawned. So it looks like the Lost are coming from this area. You'll see that we ping the map as to where the Lost are coming from. Um, but hopefully we can still manage to grind these tanks out. Uh, one thing you want to be... Now, I actually used my magazine reload there, which automatically reloads the entire magazine. But be careful with this tank, because you'll see that uh, now I've got myself isolated. I just lost all my health, and I've used all of my heals, and now I'm on half health as well. And now there's Lost coming in. My team were a little bit behind me. It's not their fault. It's my fault, because I got myself isolated. And I think I was calling out right now. I don't have a heal. Does anyone have an AoE heal? And the Lost hit me for 649. So be very careful with the Lost. Luckily, my team can pick up my uh, Miriam. And we've actually got 600 Miriam. And so all my team have to do now is make their way to the Magnus. And we should be okay. But there's the Immortal chasing right now. And you don't want to get within that AoE pulse that the, uh, the Immortal has. Otherwise, you are going to get melted. Um, we've got a minute left, and I was just hoping that my team were going to be able to make it towards the Magnus. Luckily, Jack, who did some heroics in one of the previous games, nearly got us back into the, the round by delivering all of the Miriam, is now going to, uh, to carry me now as he delivers his payload to the Magnus. So, in this kind of a phase, let me clarify that it's very important that you get to the Magnus within the time limit. If you don't get to the Magnus within the time limit, then... You are literally... The game just ends. There's no grace period at the end. There's no grace period at the end. So be careful. If the timer runs out, the game is completely done. That's just... It's instantly over. So do not let that timer run out. Now we've actually got a pretty easy phase here. Do you know why we've got um, a pretty easy phase? Because we did the hard work in phase one and phase two. We collected 285 extra Miriam. So all we have to do now is get 215 Miriam to be able to complete the phase and go straight to the Magnus. And it's a good thing too, because do you see how hard the mobs get at this stage of the game? Now we're having to fight T110E5s. I've made another mistake here. I got myself isolated. I lost all my hit points and I've already used my heals. So be very, very careful. Um, be very, very careful with getting yourself isolated like I have done two times this game. Otherwise, your team are going to... You're going to die and then you're going to screw your team over. So don't do that. Don't screw your team over. Otherwise, well, you're not going to progress very fast. You're also not going to be a very good teammate. Luckily, because we did all of the work in Phase 1 and Phase 2, we're actually going to skip one of the harder phases, so to say, which is Phase 3. Uh, so after we've killed those lost, we're actually done now. You'll see that I ping the minimap, and then I realize, hopefully in a second, that there's actually no point of going after this. We might as well just go straight for the uh, the Magnus. And you'll see that I, I realize that. We have enough Miriam, no need. Let's kite round. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Jack isn't going to trigger it. I turn in case Jack triggered it. Luckily, Jack didn't trigger it. So now we can go back and go for the Magnus. And remember, you're going to be able to get that extra Miriam from defeating the final guards of the Magnus. And this, again, is phase three of phase four. So all we have to do is collect that 500 Miriam, and we're going to get the extra uh, 54 that we need from destroying the final mobs. I, I pulled back here because you'll see that my radar was telling me that the Immortal was just around the corner. Um, if you're wondering why I'm driving in such an erratic fashion, it's because there was the Immortal right there around the corner, and the last thing I wanted to do was to get caught. Unfortunately, it looks like Jack got caught a little bit, but as long as he doesn't um, get caught completely by the Immortal and loses Miriam, we should still be able to handle this. So I'm going to go forwards, and these are the final mobs that we have to do. And oh, it's another corrupted pack. And you'll see that this armor on these on these uh, these mobs is actually pretty good in this scenario. Uh, so you've got to be careful. But again, they the bots aren't too intelligent. the The only way that you're truly going to get yourself screwed is if you. Um, if you get yourself isolated like I did do a couple of times in this game. But luckily, as I said, I've got some absolute NA heroes on my team who are doing a fantastic job of getting us through this battle. 
So now we're just dumping in the final bits of the Miriam. It takes quite a while to do the final, uh, the final pulse. Luckily, it doesn't look like the Immortal chases you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here you go. We are going to be playing against the final boss of Murney. This is nightmare difficulty, and we're playing against Martin Novak, who apparently he's he's actually got the vehicle that you get, the uh, the Obsidian, as you can see there, but a larger version of it. So when you're playing against uh, Martin Novak or you're playing against any of the Immortals, it's kind of like Sekiro, where they're going to actually have two lives. And as you can see, uh, yeah, when the Doom music starts, right? Yeah, Wargaming, good job with the music. It's actually a banger. Um, unfortunately, you can see that Novak managed to catch uh, Bobby Bobito there in their double. But luckily, they used the, the shield to be able to get themselves out of trouble. Okay, my number one recommendation is when the bots spawn, you stop shooting the Immortal or Martin Novak, you must shoot the ads. It's all about ad control. Because every time you damage the boss, it has certain stages which spawns more and more ads. And the ads don't disappear. So make sure that you always focus the ads. You can see here, I don't want them to catch Bobby. So I'm going to actually go in the way, make sure I protect Bobby here. Although I think I'm the worst hero ever. But I use my group heal to keep Bobby in the game. Because if Bobby gets shut down this early on, we're screwed. It looks like Jack came across to also get an AoE heal. And um, yeah, it's chaos. It's chaos. When you're, when you're fighting against Martin Novak on Nightmare Difficulty... Now, you'll see that I actually say kite it, kite it, kite it. And the reason why I say that is because I think I was getting a little bit excited, okay? And I, this was the first time we ever did the nightmare difficulty. And I didn't quite understand that actually your abilities reset. I'll clarify that more in a second because more bots have spawned. We've got hedgehogs coming in. We're having to avoid AoEs. We're, again, focus the ads because every time that you get Novak down more and more, you're going to uh, have... Um, He's going to spawn more ads. You notice now I've actually got a knackered engine, so I'm going to boost to be able to get away from the hedgehog, and I'm just praying that somebody's going to come and do an AoE heal. And it looks like uh, we had Chard Fox there give me an AoE heal, which fixes my engine, which allows me to stay in it. Now, again, I'm going to make a mistake here. I'm going to tell my team to kite uh, the, the boss. And while kiting the boss is a pretty good idea, by the way, was he BMing one of his own bots there? I'm going to say kite. And the reason why I'm saying kite is because I thought that if we delayed the boss for a little while, we've got more than enough time that we would be able to regain our abilities and heal up for the final phase of ads or be able to get ourselves more healthy for the final stage. However, this is factually incorrect because you actually get all of your health back once you destroy one of the boss's lives and you get all of your abilities back. So I guess you don't need to kite in this situation to get all of your abilities back. You can just go straight for the boss. Other thing I'd like to mention is that you do actually collect special ammo here, which has less pen but more alpha damage, so you can use that later on in the battle to do more damage either to the boss or to be able to handle the adds. So don't worry so much about kiting the boss to be able to go and get your health back and your abilities back, as you do get them automatically when you defeat their first life. Okay, so first life down of Martin Novak on Insanity difficulty. Let's see if we can be able to get one more done. I have to admit, I love this. I do feel like I'm raiding in World of Warcraft again or doing some kind of like mythic dungeon again. Oh man, it's awesome. And this, as I said, this team, Bobby Brito, Chard Fox, the Lunar Gamer and Jack are all absolute complete heroes for putting up with my shenanigans, I think, on the stream. I'm probably getting a little bit too passionate with my, my calling up to what we should do. But they all came together and we created a real good plan. All right, so again, we're not focus focusing Martin because we don't want to uh, get him to spawn more ads. We want to have the game control. So always leave the boss, focus the ads. After you focus the ads down, then you can start back on the boss. Of course, if you're starting to run out of time, you might want to, uh, to I guess, not focus the ads, but more on that in just a second. You'll see that Martin still keeps putting down these, uh, these AoE abilities, which is a little bit brutal. Okay, so again, once we've got him down to about a third of his hit points removed, uh, he spawns more adds. And this is the danger phase. You can see our team is starting to lose a load of hit points. We've used our, our personal heal. We have a group heal still if we need to. I'm thinking about healing. But I'm also seeing that Chard Fox is low. So I'm actually going to drive towards my friends here. And I'm going to do my AoE heal to be able to get all of them topped up. Don't just think about yourself, think about your team. And also think about all of the hedgehogs coming towards you as well. 
One thing that's quite interesting is the uh, the amount of ping that I have on the NA server definitely makes this a little bit stressful. Come on, three, two, one. We managed to get out of the AOE there. And also be very careful because Martin Novak will use boosters to try and ram you and don't get rammed by him. It's not going to help. Okay, so we've dealt with one set of ads. Now we're going to focus Martin. And then what we're going to do is I believe the call now is don't focus the final set of ads. The, the call from me is going to be focus Martin Novak because we've got one minute and 40 seconds left and he's low on health. So in my opinion, once you've got the boss down so he's only got 30% health, I don't think it's worth shooting all of the ads. I think the ads are too much. And I think what you should do is you should focus the boss instead and hopefully aim a little bit better than me. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is victory defeating Martin Novak on the Nightmare difficulty. So once again, my top tips for the, the boss encounter are for his first life, ads, then boss. Stop, stop nuking the boss when the new ads spawn, focus the ads, then boss. For his second life, I would recommend you focus the ads down, then do the boss, then focus the ads down, and then when the boss uh, gets to 30% and he spawns the new set of ads, don't bother with the ads, focus your firepower on him. Hopefully you've you saved one of your damage abilities and just blaze away and try and shut him down. Because I do feel that the timing pressure for casual groups will be too much and you will need that extra time to just ignore the ads and just to focus the boss down. Hopefully burn all of your damage abilities and be able to get through it. And once again, if you want to find some like-minded gamers because you don't have enough friends inside World of Tanks, then I'll put links to my Discord server down below where I've created a bunch of rooms so that you can try and find like-minded many players to be able to try and defeat it on nightmare difficulty or for example as just j rexy here trying to uh, to beat on normal difficulty which is there no shame in that because you've got to build yourself up so all in all money 2023 you know i must give a big shout out to wargaming i think they've done a fantastic job with this game mode i think it's really fun it's a good opportunity to play with your buds kick back have a little bit of a relax and be able to get yourself some really good rewards as well I think for the very first time, Wargaming have actually made it reasonably attractive and feasible for even casual players to be able to get a full-blooded tier 8 premium tank that makes extra credits and extra crew training. And while there are opportunities for people with a lot of money to skip the grind, to be able to get the keys, to get all of the rewards and to be able to complete the tank, I think this should be perfectly possible for even casual players over a two-week period. So from my perspective, just a massive thumbs up for gaming. I think this is possibly one of the, the best conceived events that you've ever done. It's fun, it's different, it's challenging enough, it feels rewarding. A massive two thumbs up from me. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full guide to Murney. Uh, I really hope the, the detailed um, help with being able to either get through the phases or maybe i even help you to be able to get the nightmare difficulty done was useful if it was give the video a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments down below what you think about money 2023 do you think it's great do you think it's boring do you think it's a waste of time are you going to play it are you not going to play it do you think it's too hard do you think it's too easy let me know what you think in the comments down below and once again join discord and go and find some like-minded gamers if you're having a hard time and as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.